Hey ya, Tay here. I was planning on uploading a bigger video today, but I've been sick for the better part of the week, so let's just keep things simple. Today, we're making a dungeon puzzle in RPG Maker using variables. Now, personally, I love when dungeons are more than just hallway simulators full of enemy encounters. A good puzzle can make exploration more rewarding and break up the combat in a fun way. I've noticed a lot of indie RPGs tend to skip puzzles in their dungeons, though. Maybe some devs just don't like them. And like, I get it, I have seen complaints about puzzles slowing down the action. But I think at least some part of it is that some RPG Maker devs, especially those just starting out, aren't super familiar with switches and variables. There are quite a few how to use switches tutorials here on YouTube, so let's focus on variables instead and use variables to make a simple puzzle. It's going to be one of those collect all the gems, press all the buttons, turn on all the things to proceed type of puzzles. For our demonstration, we're going to light a bunch of fires because arson. Now, there are a few variations of this puzzle, but today's video is a beginner's tutorial, so we're going to do the simplest version, where it doesn't matter which order you press the buttons, or in our case, light the fires in, you just need to do all of them. This is my favorite version of this puzzle, as it lets the player do things in their own order and at their own pace, as opposed to a sequential version. This type of puzzle is useful over the course of a full dungeon, because the player will need to traverse the dungeon to turn on all the things, and you can even hide the big ol' button behind a scripted enemy encounter or something. So let's actually get a venting. We'll start by deciding how many things we want to turn on. I'm thinking seven. I'm going to use these angel statues, and the instructions to the player will be to light the fire. So let's go about setting up their events. We'll have them activate with the action button. Since it doesn't matter which order we light them in, we're going to have each of them add one to a variable when we interact with them. Let's call the variable angel statues lit. Then we'll play a sound effect like a fire lighting sound and activate self switch A. On the second page, I'll use the version of the statue with the burning fire, and I won't let clicking on it do anything. Copy and paste until we have seven. And now as it is, it does nothing. So I'm gonna create a barrier that's blocked off unless you light all the angel statues. Let's make it this weird crack in the wall thing with vines. And we'll have it say something like, the sacred flame opens the way, or, ooh, or even the seven sacred flames open the way. So we know that we have to light seven flames. Now let's give this one a second page. The second page is active when our variable, angel statues lit, is at seven or more. So on the second page, we're going to set the door to open up and turn on self-switch A. One more page. This one is activated by self-switch A, and is the open version of the door. This page will have a transfer event to the next map of the dungeon. Hopefully a boss room or something, and not my debug map. Oh god, not the debug map.
Okay, that works perfectly. And it's fine just as it is. But let's add a little extra something something to it. Let's make the statues only able to be lit if you have a torch. We'll put a torch in this treasure chest here. And picking it up gives us the key item torch. Now, adjust our angel statues to only work if it's behind the conditional branch of has item torch. You can do really fun stuff with this conditional branch approach. Maybe instead of a key item, you have to be wearing a certain piece of armor, or in possession of a cursed sword of doom or something. This could be cool if it's a dungeon that you can get to and wander around in, but maybe you have to meet certain conditions or find a super rare MacGuffin to actually progress in. To give it extra polish and let the player know there's definitely something to do here, you could utilize the else feature of the conditional branch. I'm just going to show a question mark balloon icon if you don't have the torch. And that's it! Now we have a fully functional turn on all the things puzzle that encourages exploration, gives the player a small objective to complete, and makes use of variables in a simple but effective way. There are lots of other ways that you could spice this puzzle up too. Maybe you could add a timer for some extra challenge. Though, be conservative with your timer use, they get annoying pretty fast. You can make it where only a certain party member can do all the things, so they have to be the party leader. And there's plenty of other things you could do. Anyway, I hope this tutorial helped you get more comfortable using variables in your dungeon puzzles. If you're a beginner and this taught you how to make a simple puzzle, let me know. Or if you're experienced with the engine and just hung around to hang out, also let me know. If you're subscribed to the channel and have seen a few of my videos, I'm sure you've realized that I'm experimenting to try to find my own video style. This channel is just getting started after all. So was this beginner's tutorial helpful for you? Or do you prefer more advanced tutorials? Drop a comment letting me know the type of videos you'd like to see. And thanks for hanging out with me. I'll catch you in the next video.